Welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I'm AJ Dean, your host, and I have the funny, outrageous, and wonderful uh, podcaster himself, Paul Vato. Hey, Paul, how's it going this week? Oh, amazing, AJ. Thank you so much for having me, especially on this podcast, because we get to revisit with the angel and chat with Yvette Vargas. Like, I'm such big fans of these two ladies that it's it's amazing. So thank you for letting me be a part of this. Uh, I'm excited. Thank you, Paul. I'm excited too. We love these two beautiful powerhouse ladies, I'll call them in Hollywood. And let me just introduce them uh, before we greet them. Paul, we've got such a blockbuster show tonight. Two amazing VIP guests, Yvette Vargas, from the New Hollywood Movement. She's also a award-winning writer, director, and producer, and an incredible immersive storyteller. Uh, New York Times says she is the artist to watch, uh, and that's definitely the truth. And then also we have the lovely and beautiful The Angel, who is a composer, producer, and record producer, and who is described by the LA Weekly as fiercely independent. And I love that. So let's give him a very warm welcome, Paul. Hello, lovely Yvette and the angel. Welcome. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. So both of you are back and now both of you are on the same show. Um, So this is so thrilling for us. And you're here and we're here tonight to talk about confessions. Um, This is Yvette Vargas's brand new film, and uh, we want to talk about it. So this is a a story that I love. Now, Yvette, this is your original creative idea. It's come from you as the artist. And the angel, you are the composer for Confessions. Um, And so this is amazing. So Yvette, let's go to you first and tell us about Confessions, what it means to you. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, again, th- thank you for having me, ha- having us. Uh, so excited to be here tonight to uh, to tell you about Confessions um, and, uh, and, and, and more. Um, so, uh, so yes, I mean, Confessions is, is my brainchild. Um, it's uh, an idea that I began developing before COVID. And then, of course, during lockdown, <laughs> I really locked down on it, um, and uh, further further developed it. Um, and it's uh, it's about a five hundred year old angel um, who was uh, who committed a sin. As an angel, he was justifiably he was he was justified in doing so. But uh, but but with that sin, he was kicked out of heaven. He was banished, and now he's been roaming the earth for five hundred years. And he was giving he was given a penance. Um, the only way for him to get back to heaven and in the arms of the woman that he loves, he basically has to find sinners with deep, dark seated sins. And he has to lead these sinners to atonement, basically compel them to take action any way that he can for these sinners to right their wrong and cleanse their soul. And, uh, the angel doesn't know, um, how many sinners he needs to, to lead to atonement, um, for to fulfill his 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 penance, but it's the only way that he's going to get back to heaven. So that's the engine that is driving the entire um, story, the entire concept forward. Um, but it is set in present day, and and he has a, a very complicated present day existence and uh, and journey. And uh, but at the center of this entire story is uh it is a there's a love there's a complicated 500 year old love triangle that uh basically is also uh, a very large part a uh, large part of the story so that's just an overview um because i de- could definitely d- dive deeply for forever but i just want to give you a brief overview of the concept um and a bit of the journey and uh, the complications of all all the characters are, are very are, are very um complicated but certainly in terms of the fallen angel whose name is Manuel 
he has uh, he has a lot to contend with, um, and he brings all all of that uh, to uh, to every scene, to every performance, um, and hopefully uh, you know to the hearts <laughs> of many audience members and uh, and and fans. So that's a, a bit about uh, confessions conceptually. This is amazing, and I love this story already. Um, let's go over to the angel who. Um, who composed this? You you did the entire entire film. Is that right? Or in the process of it? Is that right, the angel? Yes, yes, yeah. I scored the film. Uh huh. And I mean, you know, it's so interesting listening to to Yvette describe it because it, it's such a big world. You know, this short film is a fantastic proof of concept for a series, and so a lot of these exciting details are things that you know, will are, are to be discovered um, as we get to that place. I'll let I'll let Yvette talk more about about what's going on in that in that realm. But it's um it's evocative. It's got you know it's centered on fallen angel who's in the poster um, that you've got on the screen, and um, and played by Carlos Leal. Am I pronouncing him correctly? Yes, you are. Yes, you Thank are. You. Very good. And he is wonderful. I mean, he's really got, he, he brings such gravitas to this role um, that it was such a pleasure to, to, and so inspiring for me to write, to picture as I'm watching his performance and listening to what he's saying, all those brilliant things that Yvette has him doing as both a writer and director. Um, it, it gives me so much to play with. And a lot of his his struggles and his the things that are tormenting him are very internal. So it's really nice, you know, that we've got scenes where it's really just him alone with his thoughts and he's brooding and he's, you know, he's struggling, um, lonely. You know, his existence is, is a tough one. Um, and so we, we learn a little bit about that in, in the in the short and um, and it was really wonderful to be able to create score that that played to his internal, uh, you know, struggles. It's um, it's very cool. It sounds so exciting and such a powerful message. You know, I love this story because um, confessions. Uh, first of all, it's like a reflection. As I'm gonna, I can't wait to see this. First of all, because. Um, I, well, first of all, I want to say very, very importantly, there's an option. I think I'm going to be in the sinner's book. Is that right, Yvette? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, AJ, you are, your, your name will be in the, uh, the sinner's <laughs> book. It's an ancient, it's an ancient book that belongs to Manuel, the, uh, the, the, the fallen angel. And, and within the sinner's book, basically the the name of the next sinner that he basically has to find and again to compel to uh to to right their wrongs those names appear you know appear there it's this is a supernatural drama so there there is a divine intervention of how those names appear <laughs> in the book so there will be divine intervention which is also called vfx <laughs> <laughs> of how your name AJ will appear AJ Dean AJ Dean will appear in the um the book the book of sinners and then in terms of the opportunity that you just spoke of is uh that we are creating more content and we uh, are inviting the community to be come part of our confessions family come become part of our confessions journey and uh, so we're offering various tiers that uh, fans and the community literally can become part of it um, by, uh, you know, uh, purchasing tickets for various tiers and uh, you purchase a specific tier where your name will be featured inside the Book of Sinners, which we will be shooting during the production. I am so, so honored and so it's such a privilege to be included. So, how can people get, uh, you know, to see these different packages and the different perks? Is it entertainment.com? Correct. Yes. Yes. So it's entertainment. So, so entertain, M-I-N-T, uh, entertainment.com slash projects slash confessions is where you literally will find uh, the, the, the confessions project and all the various opportunities to become, again, part of 
uh, the confessions, our, our confessions project and, uh, and entertain mint.com is it's a platform. It's actually a, uh, a web three platform built, yeah, built, built on the blockchain, utilizing blockchain, um, as, uh, you know, as, as, as part of the, uh, the, you know, just, just the monetization model and mechanism, but absolutely you can use your credit cards. You can use old school, old school, uh, payment methods as, as, as well. They do not discriminate money. So, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and there uh, again, entertain mint.com slash project slash confessions, is where you'll you'll find the various tiers where you can be again be, you can become you can purchase a ticket these are tier tickets into our confessions world and each tier offers different kinds of perks and opportunities including site vis uh site production um site visits well production set visits um uh photo uh, uh scouts i'm sorry um scout visits as well um of course like behind the scenes photos with the stars and, and and the cast and the crew and uh and a whole host of other perks uh including including a metaverse premiere of the film live live uh premieres of the film and many 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 other perks so i think there's a lot of great stuff on there uh also you know phone calls with myself phone calls with our star carlos leal uh, mm -hmm. who the angel was just mentioning so there really are some pretty incredible perks mm -hmm. um you know uh and or utility however you however you you look at them and uh and you and you get to become part of the confessions project this is so exciting what do you think about this paul isn't this fabulous oh are you kidding me I, this is like right up my alley and obviously i, I love a good pun so uh you had me at entertain mint uh <laughs> dot com uh amazing amazing uh and you, you you see this you said as a proof of concept for uh maybe for a series um yes is, yes is that so, kind of the overall goal yes paul and thank you for, for asking that question so initially when i conceived confessions i developed it as a one hour television series i uh i work in television uh i mean i work in many <laughs> mediums but you know certainly television is 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 a a, a a medium that I'm constantly, constantly working in. I'm, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm a, as a television de de development executive, as a creator, as, uh, as, as a writer. Um, I mean, I've sold, I've sold seven pitches. Um, so I, I mean, I've been working in television extensively for quite some time, and um, so I conceived it initially as a television series. But I'm also very much a world builder. That is my uh, one of one of my superpowers as a creator and, and as a storyteller. So everything that I developed pretty much is a franchise. It is a universe. So although I initially conceived it as a television series, the uh, the vision, and let's just say that the world, the world, um, it's all uh, established, you know, established so that that I could really grow, the story itself can grow, the, the character journeys, the opportunities, basically for unlimited storytelling within within the universe regardless of medium medium and platform so um so i so i initially conceived it a television series but have written it and created it in such a way that it is a universe it, it is a franchise so what we have produced thus far is this proof of concept short um that uh, very much speaks to the television series but at the same time we could also move forward with a feature film we could move forward with other mediums because we are the, the proof of concept is giving us a window into what the series is and also um what it, what it will be right like when you watch the proof of concept short it is satisfying because there is a beginning middle and end to that particular story but there are many um there are just many details that are also uh layered into this proof of concept where you know that there's much more, <laughs> yeah. you know where, where there's much more. So, so definitely, you know, we 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 are utilizing this proof of concept short um, to represent the vision and also represent the possibilities moving forward. And uh, and then we're also leveraging this short to be able to enter it into film festivals and uh, you know just other opportunities from um, you know a short slash film perspective as well. So we're we're we are leveraging what we have created 
Paul, uh, how, you know, every, every way that we possibly can. Wow. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. This is wonderful. I'm enjoying this so much. And I do have a question about, you have a premiere coming up. Is that okay to talk about the angel and Yvette? Sure. All, right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go over to you, the angel. Um, and it says there's a screening. Um, help me out if, if, or correct me if I'm, uh, I, uh, if I need your help, please be there. LA International Film Festival, March 21st, 2023 at 7.45 PM Pacific Standard Time uh, at location Lamel NoHo 7. 5240 Lancashire Boulevard, North Hollywood, California, 91601. <laughs> yeah, it's the Lemley Theater. Yeah. Lemley, thank you for that. See, I need your help. Always it's need okay. your help. You were thank fabulous. You. I mean, that was pretty, that was pretty damn incredible. Very that impressive. Was, yeah, that was excellent. <laughs> I just want to give you a little help. That's all. Because it's okay. a, you know, it's a name that we don't come across very often unless we're, <laughs> we're native, you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I need help from the local. Go ahead, Yvette. No, well, I, I love, um, AJ, that you basically just, you were so specific and mentioned every detail, including the zip code. Yes. And, and, and then the punchline was the angel, of course, saying the Lemley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lemley. Yeah, of course. Just, just say Lemley. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic. I, I, I loved it. So, yes. So, so this is our first screening, um, public screening in in, uh, in 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 a movie theater in, in in a movie theater so we're extremely excited about that and uh and we're going to have a great a great showing because um everyone's excited about it so uh so a lot of people are planning are planning to to be there um we've started having some uh some private some private industry screenings and we literally just had a screening a uh, private industry screening last week and the angel was there carlos leal um, who she mentioned was uh, was there. Uh, Hilliard Guess was also there, who, who who is an executive producer as well, along with the Angel and uh, and then just some really incredible industry folks. And uh, and I'm still blown away from that from the screening from from the response. Um, the Angel, I don't know if you wanted to, yeah. to speak to that. It really was. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty incredible. <laughs> it was. It was. You know what was really nice. Um, so many of your long standing colleagues and friends came to, to, to check it out and support you, which I, I love that. I thought that was really, really wonderful. And, you know, everyone's an industry professional on, you know, doing different things in the industry, but people who have real, a real opinion about things and were very thoughtful about the screening and, and had a lot of really amazing things to share um, as far as their feedback at the end, we just, and, you know, it was great because Yvette was able to really introduce every single person. There were maybe like 25 people or something like that. It was, it was a nice group yeah. and everybody was able to, to share something really, um, I thought very insightful about the, about the film and how it made them feel and, and, you know, seeing the potential for, uh, for so much more story. And, and that's really encouraging. I mean, I, I saw it and I could feel it the minute that, that Yvette and I started talking about the film before she started shooting it. Um, and it was just so great that, you know, getting through the shoot that people are seeing that as well, which is, it's really important. Um, and there's some really great things going on in that realm, but yeah, it was a really, it was a great screening. Um, it was really nice to meet Hilliard Guest, who I I know via Clubhouse, of course, but we've never met in person before, so that was very very, very nice. Um, and uh, and and to really to meet some of the people that you work with, Vivette, on a on a regular basis. You you know I don't know how much you want to talk about that, but that I think that's kind of interesting too for people to know what what it is you do. Sure, sure. Well. Thank no, thank you, thank you, my darling. Um, yeah, uh, again, it was uh, it was just so fantastic to share uh, this private screening room um with uh, my you know people that I love I mean every single person that was there means something to me deeply and uh and and I mean and of course there were a few people that came as guests that I just met for the for the first time but they were awesome as well out you know clearly but mm -hmm. uh but you know the people that I knew everyone really meant something to me and uh and they and it was I mean the feedback 
and the response, it was just very, very thoughtful. And there was a tremendous amount of energy and excitement um, and, uh, and, and support for sure. Um, the, you know, the, that also that, uh, that kind of experience occurred on the first um, private screening also that, you know, that, that, that I held. So it's, it's, it's affirming, you know, one of the things that, 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 that I'll also just, you know, mention, and I'm sure the angel will attest to this is as, you know, while we're creating and producing um, any, you know, any, any piece of content um, and, and specifically with, with a cinematic piece, you see it so many times, <laughs> you know, you work it, it's, it's, it's like you're chipping away, you're, you're polishing, you're polishing, you're polishing, uh, you know, uh, a stone to a diamond. And um, so, you know, with all of that, uh, just, you know, so much, so, so much, so many thoughts creep in just because we've seen it in every, every single iteration and it's yeah. a process. So to actually screen it with an audience um, was, uh, it was just reaffirming. It was just absolutely re re reaffirming um, because it's like, you know, at this point I can't, I, I can't see it without seeing all the flaws um, <laughs> for myself or just, you know, what I wanted to do and couldn't do, or, you know, what have you, or just workarounds. Um, but that was, uh, that was, that was really powerful. And, uh, and in terms of, um, one of the hats that I wear that I mentioned earlier is that I work as a television development executive. Um, I work with a company called Hidden Empire Film Group with, which, uh, actually, is the second largest independent production company in the US, Blumhouse being the first. So they're, you know, so they're number two. And uh black owned, you know, black black owned company and uh, you know, very independent spirit, um, although they very much work in 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 old Hollywood uh, you know, these days, but they still, you know, produce, you know, as much as they can produce independently, they do and they do everything. They finance, they distribute. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. But they have uh, historically been in the film space. So they brought me on, uh, it's kind of crazy, in August, it'll be two years, it's it's wild. But uh, in that time, I've developed 20 television series. Wow. Um, yes, uh, we're creeping up, actually, because there were two more that were added to the plate. But anyway, so, but but I've developed, uh, you know, 20, now 21 um, television series in that time. And uh, now we're starting to um, go out with those and sell and sell those. And there's some amazing, amazing shows uh, that, and, and I very confidently that that we're going to be selling, um, you know, a good number, a good number of of the shows. So um, some of the, you know, some some of my colleagues from Hidden Empire Film Group attended the screening last week, and it was just fantastic to have them there and they're just huge major you know major fans um and of course want to support and get involved uh however however they can so it, it was just a very magical evening i mean in, in the midst of of, of literally uh, a storm in la <laughs> yes, literally <laughs> literally a rain rainstorm uh mm -hmm. cold yeah. cold that we have not experienced in you know like um, 30 years from what i hear i mean i haven't been in la for for, for 30 years but from what i hear and, uh, but, you know, certainly we've been 20 to 25 degrees below uh, normal, uh, normal for this time of year um, and and <laughs> with this rainstorm. So in the midst of all of that, it was this very magical experience last week. And uh, so we're riding that wave. We're continuing to build on that momentum. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we brought on um, a very big uh, a, a showrunner in the business. So, uh, so, you know, we're, we're very excited. We're very excited. Congratulations, Yvette. I am so, so very proud of you. And 21 plus TV series. My goodness. I, I didn't know this. And I'm just so and I don't know if every everybody knew it. But now I want everybody to know how fabulous you are. And what a great writer um, and executive Hollywood executive that you are. Um, the angel, I did want to ask, is the screening that's coming up, is that public, open to the public or? This, for is, a, this is a public uh, film festival. Yes, absolutely. And and we encourage anybody who wants to check this out to come. I mean, we're, we're going to be there. When I told Judah Ray about this last night in the room, he was like, oh my God, you're going to be, you're going to be there. I got to go. <laughs> so. 
because <laughs> everybody knows I don't really make it out that often. But, yeah. you know, I, I completely support this project. I love Yvette. I love this project. Very, very committed to it. Um, you know, when, when Yvette very humbly talks about, you know, developing 21 projects, when you know what's involved in developing a, a series, it is enormous. Yes. It is not just, you know, it's not just writing a script, which is a big enough job anyway. Yeah. Um, you have to really, you have to know your entire series. And it's it's a tremendous amount of thought and creation and planning. And it's it's just an enormous task. So, I mean... I, I'm just giving a little extra on the flowers here because that that's a that's a tremendous deal, um, and it and it's a testament really that to your creativity, yeah. uh, you know, to be able to not only think of what to do with all of these ideas, but um, but to be able to manage them is tremendous. Thank you, oh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, everyone. I uh, I really do appreciate that, um, and I do want to agree with the angel. It's a tremendous amount of work. In fact, that is the work. That is the work. That that development work. Because if you what if and when you do that correctly and thoroughly enough, then you have all of that incredible information, all of that incredible um, you know story and 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 characters and vision of where it's going and, and, and your backstory, you know, when you do all of that work, that becomes then the springboard for writing the script, pitching it, creating, you know, creating your, 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 your visuals, your, your, your decks, your, your, your one sheet. I mean, everything comes from this development work and mm -hmm. uh, it's just essential. It is absolutely essential. And that is the place to begin. That is definitely the place to begin. You know, you know, some people, they're just like, oh, well, I'm going to go write the pilot or you know i'm uh, i'm gonna go shoot something <laughs> but but without actually doing this work you're actually you know, doing yourself a disservice mm -hmm. and, uh so yeah it's a tremendous amount of work it's exhausting <laughs> and everything else but it's also incredibly satisfying you know because tomorrow I mean, i'm sorry that this morning i turned in um you know a document uh a development document of, of a of a brand new project a hidden empire film group project. And that's actually, uh, that was a, a universe. So I basically had to explain the universe first and then list, then list the individual projects, all, the, the different stories that are being told within that universe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's just like a, a, a way of thinking and a way of creating and developing. But when you do that, the possibilities are endless. And, uh, you know, and I really, I really believe that every creator needs to be thinking and creating this way. Amazing. So. Amazing. Thank you so much. I admire you both so very much. Two of the classiest women I know. And Paul, I wanted to check in with you. <laughs> Paul, um, did you want to ask a question or make a comment, Paul? Well, uh, all, all I can think of is, I, I want to say thank you to Yvette. Uh, I guess this is the event party, but uh, for providing that wonderful space on Clubhouse, which I, I know I need to get to, uh, I think it just speaks volumes to this new Hollywood and how we're we're all there to support each other. But that wonderful space on Clubhouse, where the, the, the kind of that writing that writers room, where you where where you write for fifty uh, minutes and and then and then you can chat about it. But it's thank you for, for at least offering that. Uh, for people so for those that don't know uh clubhouse is a social audio app and definitely join us there because there's such great communities with the vets being part of it and and uh and, and us being there to support that so thank you thank you for that and i'm excited what day is the is this festival because i also would like to come out from vegas to uh to, oh, to support right you guys it's it's uh march 21st Yes, March 21st, Paul, at 7.45 p.m., the L.A. International Film Festival um, at Lemley. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. I, I'm just, I, I can't, I, I need your help, the angel. <laughs> Lemley. <laughs> at Lemley. <laughs> you got it. It's the Lemley. Just just pr pr pretend the A isn't in there. Just, just... <laughs> yes. Yes, it is spelled weird, right? It is. It is. Yes. Yeah, Lovely. it's confusing. There's no question about it. 
It is the, 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 the lovely, and and we and we will be promoting it. I'm just waiting. Um, yeah, we will we will be promoting it. We will be promoting it for sure. But yes, it's uh, and I believe that's a Tuesday. Yes, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, March twenty first at uh, seven, you know, seven forty five. Um, and you know, so it's 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 a shorts block. Um, so you know, we'll we will be in that shorts block. Um, but uh, we're 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 feeling strong. We're feeling yeah. confident. But it's def definitely a premium premium uh night and uh and time slot for the festival i am so excited for you both the angel what were you gonna say no i'm, I'm just i'm just agreeing i mean look it's it's gonna be a really nice um opportunity for yvette to you know this is this is your first festival right yes yes yeah you know and the festival experience is is so different um you know i also have more experience like Yvette in television and in, in a lot of the things that we do you know it's very behind the scenes so we're, it's not all about like going out and you know doing big screenings and 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 doing all of this sort of you know very tactile uh work out there in in public with people you know I mean yes there are awards shows and things like that but it's there's a different uh, dynamic around festivals and I I hear Judah and and Kimberly talk about this a lot um, because they both have, have been at many, many festivals over the years, and they're really like, you know, professionals when it comes to knowing that, and e experts really at, at, at knowing how to navigate the festivals and how to get the most out of them. And the the beautiful thing also about festivals is that, you know, you, you do build kind of like we do on the app, you know, you're building community um, yeah. in person with other filmmakers, with investors, producers, you name it. Um, and it's, and so many of those relationships, um, that a lot of our buddies have, you know, they've built up over many years and they stay in touch forever. Um, and sometimes they wind up working together many years later, you know, so it's really, it's a great opportunity. I think it's going to be really fulfilling, you know, all those hours that we all spend quietly in the dark, in <laughs> our own spaces, you know, working away and no one knows what's going on. And, you know, you can't even really talk about it sometimes until, until it's almost out there. So I think it's, it's going to feel really good for you. I'm really excited for you. Um, thank, I guess you thank, thank you, my darling. And I, and I am equally as excited for you, um, any opportunity for you to shine uh, and I can and I can and I can brag about you because the uh, the angel not only is she uh, the brilliant composer of confessions but she's also an executive producer and she brought so much in terms of uh, you know her feedback with the editing and 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 uh, on on the script and just any any I mean just just so much so she has really uh, you know she, there's a lot there's a lot of the angel genius wrapped up in uh, in in confessions. It's and you know it's been it's been such a pleasure I mean honestly the 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 kind of really nice organic thing that happened is that you know Yvette and I just started talking about as we got further and further into post-production and when she got to a place where she was ready to show me a rough cut and getting close to what we call a locked picture which is essentially where the composer starts when the editing stops that's when the composer should be starting. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way, but that's that's the aim. And so um, we and we started talking, and like the more that we talked about various ways to approach things and different things that could happen with the edit, and perhaps doing some reshoots and, and some pickups, then it, it was so clear that we really have this incredible synergy. Yeah. Um, you know, it was just completely organic, natural, and. And it's been so beautiful. And I just enjoy the process of creating with you, my dear. I really do. As, as do I, as do I. It, it literally, it is just effortless. It's fun. It's inspiring. We challenge each other. We elevate each other. It's just, it's really has been so fantastic. Where I, you know, for myself, like I've had to take a step back even for myself and, and just, uh, appreciate that and, and just 
hold those moments um, because they don't happen all the time. <laughs> I hear you. I know. I know. They don't happen all the time, but I treasure every single moment and I am so incredibly grateful. So grateful. Oh, I feel the same way. It's, it's really beautiful. And it's such a wonderful thing. You know, I love it. I love the projects that have women helming those projects because they're few and far between. Yeah. You know, and I'm really, it, it excites me and it makes me feel really good to support other women, um, especially women of color. And, you know, it's every marginalized voice out there and there are plenty of us out there. Um, you know, it's really nice when we can kind of come together and create and and, and be part of the new Hollywood ethos. I love it. I love this so much. It's, it always makes me happy too. Um, and, and your synergy together is phenomenal. It really, really is. And I also love working with you both um, because you're just, you're just so great. So it's such a joy always. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did want to uh, look at this, put a little bit of attention on this poster here because it's gorgeous. It's one of my favorites. And I wanted to ask you, Yvette, how did you come up with it? Did you design it? Um, first of all, there's the cro there's a cross in the center. It's incredibly powerful uh, symbol, and it's beautiful. It's a, it's like a historic type of cross, not a modern type of cross, but one that has deep meaning and significance in history. Yes. And I loved it. And then the pictures. This reminds me of the old Hollywood, which I love this part of old Hollywood. I love the the movie uh, posters, you know, how they had the stars on them and you you have them here featured as well. You've got this incredible, warm, textured and layered um, movie poster. I absolutely adore it. Tell us about it. Sure, excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, so so uh, this particular image, I mean, everything's a process, right? right. Absolutely everything is a uh, is is a process and uh this particular image um so so these were uh actually the the people the you know the characters the characters uh from from the film these these were all taken from literally from uh stills stills from the actual concept and uh and and, and the church that's also another shot um, we have, we have a, uh, there is a, there is an exterior shot of this old church, incredible, incredible church. So you absolutely tapped into, um, you know, this, this old, um, Catholicism mm -hmm. that, you know, this, this, this old, uh, yes, this old kind of Christian, um, ideology, um, because, uh, the, the protagonist, um, as I mentioned earlier, fallen angel Manuel, he was a Spanish conquistador. Wow. And uh, so as he is basically ravaging Central and South American villages, bringing Catholicism <laughs> to, uh, you know, to to that region, uh, you know, he himself then becomes an instrument um, because of sin and atonement, you know, him, him, himself. So that's definitely representing some of that. And I love that you actually picked up on that, you know, this is like more ancient and historical because that's, a, that's an important part of it because that's part of his backstory. And then, um, you know, the other images, uh, you know, they're composites actually from some pretty pivotal moments uh, in, in, in the narrative of the of this proof of concept short so it's it's a composite if this is a composite from mm -hmm. um you know from some of those scenes and some of those and some of those uh some of those moments and if you look closer even closer uh, you'll see that there are some of the markings um from uh the book the ancient you know the the, the book and also uh we can't tell from this particular uh, frontal image of a fallen angel but he actually he has tattoos he's marked with these um ancient tattoos and some of those symbols are also um etched into you know into into the into the poster so it's a composite again capturing moments capturing different time periods so i love that you picked up on 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 all of that aj thank you yes well i love things like this i love things that are um, that uh, challenge the spirit and the soul, 
Um, I love that. And um, also I wanted to, so you did this, right? You did the poster, Yvette? Well, this this particular poster. So, um, I mean, everyone kind of had, had a hand in it between myself, you know, my husband. And then um, there was a, an amazing uh, poster artist who we had the, the good fortune of working with, who, uh, you know, who then put everything together, uh, put everything together, which was which was really, really wonderful. So. Uh, so, yeah, so it's it's definitely um, everyone. had Everyone had a hand. So it in was it. a collaboration. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I know that you did a lot of research on this story. So I wanted to ask both of you what this story means to you. I want to ask you, Yvette, how did you come up with this story? Um, but it's so good question. Good question. It, it's so significant and relevant for our time. Uh, so so how did you where did it originate from? How did you get it? Yeah, I mean, so some of the inspiration, you know, initially growing up as a Catholic Latina <laughs> was a very big influence initially. And I have always been fascinated with uh, the idea of sin and atonement, that relationship between sin and atone atonement, especially as, uh, again, growing up, growing up uh, in, in, uh, with, in the Catholic faith and Catholicism uh, and, uh, and confession. You know, I mean, you know, if if you are familiar with the Catholic uh, uh, faith, I mean, you know, confession actually becomes a very big part. I mean, there, there's a whole ritual of confirmation where you uh, literally that, you know, that's when you go to the confession booth for the first time. So it's 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 a very big part of 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 the religion. Um, and uh, so I was just always fascinated with that, where the, you, know, you had the opportunity literally to confess your sins to a, a priest who's representing God in this kind of process. And then uh, you're giving, you're, you're given a penance, whether it's in the form of prayers or whatever the, you know, the penance may be. And that that was a way to cleanse your soul. So literally saying out loud, admitting out loud your sins and, and, then, begin, and then being given a penance so that you can atone to cleanse, to cleanse your soul. That was just always, it's very, very powerful. Just, I mean, and even, even if you don't necessarily believe that process, but just the idea of that, I think is incredibly powerful. So I was just always fascinated with, uh, you know, with, with that. So that's part of it. That was part of the initial inspiration. And then another um, aspect of the inspiration is again, being, you know, being a Latina um, and the history of, um, you know, colonization uh, and uh, and all of these indigenous people um, that 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 were colonized um, that uh, in those countries are now part of the you know the Latino uh, diaspora you know so I'm very interested in in all of that history and, and a great deal of that history has been lost yeah. so so I one of the things that I that I want to do with this series is to be able to tell some of that history to to and 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 uh, showcase you know the, those heroes and those heroines. Um, that uh, again, I mean, you know, just so so few really know those stories, and and also the um, the mythology of of uh, of those cultures, and um, and and villages and civilizations, as well as the um, like the medicinal value. I mean, there, there's so many there's so many incredible indigenous, um, you know, whether whether it is healing, whether you know whether uh, there are beliefs, whether it you know with various practices. That I also want to showcase as 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 well. So between those two fascinations, <laughs> and uh, and and being a genre genre writer, um, you know that those were those were the seeds of my early inspiration. And then COVID happened. You know, COVID happened, and you know for me it was very much a wake up. You know, just just a reset, a wake up and a reset of the, of the world. And, uh, you know, and I think many people are really thinking about what now, you know, what now, you know, we've, we've had this shared experience. Um, you know, how can I really elevate my, my, my life in a significant manner, given everything that we have lived through and continue to live through, but now is the time, um, you know, if you, if you weren't necessarily taking action, action before now truly is the time. And I think through confessions, that we can have very deep conversations that are universal um, because no one is without sin. 
And, uh, but there's always an opportunity to atone. And I really do believe, and that, that, that people will be thinking about, oh, you know what I, you know, if they watch confessions or, you know, they hear about it or they, you know, they understand the concept, concept that they may be inspired to reach out to someone that they've been thinking about that, you know, perhaps things that, you know, aren't on the best footing or there are just some things that are unsaid, or if you really do want to atone, um, you know, for something, or even find it in your, in your heart, actually for forgiveness, Mm -hmm. um, to be forgiving of, of, of someone else. And, uh, so, so, so I really do believe that that, that that will happen quite a bit because, because I, and we have already experienced that you know, from the screenings, I will tell you from, from both of the screenings and especially the last one, the, the, it inspires so much conversation, um, that, you know, people, not only, not only they having in terms of the narrative that they've seen, but also in terms of their life, what they can be doing. And, uh, and we need that (laughs) as a society, we need that. So I do believe that it's also a show that will be an instrument for healing. And, uh, you know, and bringing just, you know, bringing, bringing education and healing and spirituality to people's lives and whatever form of sp- like spirituality is to them. And that's just scratching the surface. But those were some of the inspirations and uh, in terms of a greater, a greater purpose, a greater calling for the show. So well said, Yvette. Thank you for that. Beautiful. And I loved everything that you said. Um such an important this is such an important film the angel over to you well you know it, it was such a pro, it, this is a very provocative story that this first piece of the story um in the film and it's a really unusual story it's very kind of you know you you might think you know what where it's going and you have no idea until you get to the end of it which is really great um and it is incredibly provocative. It really makes you think. And so Yvette is absolutely right. At the end of that screening, there was a lot of discussion about, you know, how everybody felt about what had happened amongst these characters. Um, you know, it's it's a very layered thing, even for a fallen angel whose job it is to get somebody to atone. Um, that even in this particular instance, and I won't give away anything about what happened, but in this instance, and this is something I, I, I was saying to Yvette as I was scoring it, was it, you know, yes, he succeeds in getting the, that atonement from, from that person, but he, while he has succeeded, it's it's sort of bittersweet because there's a there's an aspect of it in which there, you know, not everybody wins here. It's not always a win about, you know, in, in that, you know, in, in that, uh, in, in this story in particular, but in, in life, you know, things are a lot more complicated than, than, than the simplicity of, of how some stories can be told. And so the nice thing about this is that there's a lot there um, and it's really clever. And I really take my hat off to you, Yvette, for coming up with this. It's a really interesting story. Uh, yeah, so that's my thank opinion. you, my darling. Thank you, thank you so much. I I love it. I just absolutely love everything about it. And I wanted to go over to Paul because I want to talk a little bit about the Catholic faith. Paul, have, were you <laughs> in the Catholic uh, private school, or tell us about it? Um. Well, I'd like to say that I did. I've done hard time. I did twelve years. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, first grade through 12th grade. And uh, so I've had dealings with uh, the wardens, aka the nuns. Mm -hmm. Uh, And yes, I was raised Roman Catholic. Uh, I didn't have the benefit of choosing. I mean, I I know, obviously, you get baptized, and then uh, there's confirmation usually comes later in life when you can accept it. But I guess in Mexico, it's done a little bit differently. So on my first trip, to Mexico from Chicago, uh, I was confirmed. So I didn't have a choice. So it's was, it was one of the people are like, no, no, that's not right. Like you can't get confirmed when you're a baby, but apparently in Mexico you can. So uh, I was, you know, my godparents, I guess, you know, they answered for me because I was, I don't know, maybe six months old. So I do have dealings with B 
being raised Roman Catholic. So I love this. I love the way that this speaks to me. And I think also the casting is great. I mean, uh, uh, was it Carlos Leal? Is that is that who your lead is? Yes, Carlos Leal, yes. Yeah, so, so like like the perfect Spaniard really, I mean, I, I, I know that I think he was raised in like Switzerland, but he, uh, he's from Spanish parents of like, what a yes. perfect conquistador. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. Kudos. Oh my God. Yeah, no. And we, we, we got so lucky, uh, you know, with that. So yes, he, he is, he is Spanish. He is Spaniard, um, you know, ra raised, uh, well, he was born in Switzerland, um, but uh, he went back and forth between Spain um, and Switzerland and other countries. I mean, he speaks five languages fluently. <laughs> No, exactly. Right, right. Yes, that's right. French and whatnot. I mean, I'm I'm a big uh, fan of poker and the poker world, and so I remember. I think he first came on my radar when he was in that James Bond film where they play. Yes. Where they play poker when they first switched over from baccarat. They, you know, in, in the in the world of James Bond, he normally yes. played baccarat, but this was the first time where they switched over to Texas Hold'em poker. But I think I remember seeing him going like. Who is this guy? So he's he's very uh, like not unique. I mean, what's the word that I'm looking for? But like perfect casting. But uh, it's he was like such a character in that that I was like, oh, who is this? And I think that's when I first heard of him. Yeah. So to see him in your project, how did you guys connect, and uh, how did that come about? Sure. Uh, through uh, actually through a casting agent. Um, I'm sorry, a casting director, casting director Matthew Lasalle who's just absolutely fabulous. So so that's literally how we found uh, Carlos. And Carlos, oh my goodness, like he just fell in love with the script. He fell in love with the role. He wanted to do it from the moment that he read it, from the moment that he read it. So he had a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and passion for the project. And he was just, just fantastic. He is just- <laughs> How long does it run? Just out of curiosity, you said it's a short, correct? Yes, it, it's it's just under 22 minutes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. God, I can't wait to see it. I really, I'm excited for that. Well, we would love to see you on on, uh, on March 21st. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to go ask Jeff if we can uh, do a special <laughs> flight down there. Um, I don't get out that much because I'm like the angel. I'm kind of selective on, you know, <laughs> right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, I would. I think you and Jeff should make it out to uh, to Vegas. I mean, to uh, LA for this. I, it's, it would be wonderful to see you in LA. I would love to be there. Are you, I hope to see you there, Paul. Um, so, so this is amazing. You know what? I I wanted to ask um, Yvette. Were you? Did you? Were you raised in the Catholic faith? And were you confirmed? I was confirmed actually with Jeff, and but in the Episcopal Church. But that's kind of a branch. Tell us a little bit about that, Yvette. I mean, yes. I mean, I've gone through everything: baptism, confirmation, uh, marriage <laughs> under the cat. You know, <laughs> all Catholic. I've, I've I've attended many, many, many Catholic ceremonies. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, it was it was just all part of 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 my world. And um, you know, religion is was very important to my family and 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 just to Latinos in general. So it was always an influence. Um, and, and, and by the way, I do not go to church every Sunday. Um, I mean, I do enjoy when, when, when I, when I do attend church, but I just don't do that, uh, you know, every, every Sunday, but it was so ingrained in me that, um, in my times of great joy and also great sorrow, I do cling on to those, uh, you know, to, to, to my faith and just to those beliefs not only is it comforting, um, but it does, it, it gives me hope. It really does, it really does, does give me hope um, and, uh, and, and, and gratitude. And, and, and by the way, <laughs> I am not oblivious to all of the ills, <laughs> <laughs> the Catholic faith, but, you know, by the way, but all of that aside and, and the political aside, um, there really are, there really are some very valuable values and teachings uh, you know, there. And um, I mean, I mean, we're, we are, even if you're an atheist, um, you know, we are spiritual beings. And, and and I absolutely believe that. And I'm, and I am firm, uh, you know, with that. And, uh, and, and whether you tap into that or not, it's there for us for the taking. 
um, and to elevate and 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 evolve. So uh, so so it absolutely had you know a big influence, um, and that's where my relationship is now with uh, you know with with my faith. Thank you, Yvette, for explaining that. And I share that also with you. Um, my faith is also important. Um, I would love the Pope to see your short. That's I, I really would like him to 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 view it. Um, I'm gonna, gonna give him an invitation right here to come uh, all the way from Rome, Italy, where I'm part Italian. So of course, I'm gonna ask him, please come and support. And I hope you get to see this um confessions uh because it truly is i think it's pope worthy do you do you the angel do you yvette yes i, I well i would love to hear the pope's uh <laughs> take on experience. yes exactly yeah. take 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 on it um especially <laughs> the full vision right the the the, the epic story the, the backstory i would love 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 the pope's um take on that and uh so let's let's channel the pope Let's put that out there. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's put it out to the universe. And uh, and and Aja, you have the full and complete address. So it's no problem for you to be able to send all of that full information, including the zip code to the Pope <laughs> at the Vatican. <laughs> Absolutely. Our homeland, uh, right there in, in Rome, Italy. Oh, absolutely. If I'll get right on that after the show, and uh, hopefully you can bring that Pope Mobile and 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 <laughs> <laughs> and we send our respects, our highest yeah. respects, seriously to <laughs> the Pope and everyone there in Vatican City. Yes. So, um, also, Paul, I want to check in with you. Um, anything you wanted to ask Yvette or the Angel or any comments? Because we've been talking a little bit about you know the Pope and confessing and do you want to confess anything paul <laughs> uh, i don't think you guys have, have enough time to hear my confession but uh it, it would it's, it's take a while uh, but how cool, i think i did tweet it tweet out at the pope once i was like i and i, I what did i put it like hey buddy let me know if you ever want to do my podcast like something crazy <laughs> like that uh so you, but but you never know but i think in this case you you know we might have to do a private screening uh, in the Vatican, and if we all have to go to Rome, well, then so oh, well. Oh, well, no. exactly. Hey, I mean, again, let's channel that. Let's let's channel that. Let's yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. That we can have the the Pope can host us. Yeah, yeah. crazier things have happened. So, uh, yeah, let's let's put that out there into the world. Um, and of course, uh, it'd be a great excuse to take my mom to Italy because I'm sure that would be the highlight of her life if if we took her to the Vatican. That's no. That's something that I'm still trying to do, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Nice. Yeah, the Vatican is actually—it's such a special place. Uh, amazing. I mean, yeah. It really, it really, and the art is just so. And the history—it's—it's it's pretty magnificent place. Yeah. I would love to visit. Uh, I've not been to Italy yet. I've been to France. I've been to Spain. I've been to Cuba, but I've not done Italy yet. And I've been learning Italian. So, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Oh. Beautiful. Bene. Molto yeah. bene. Molto bene. Molto bene. Um, then, you know, I lived in Italy as a child. Yeah. yeah. And uh, tell us about that, the angel. You would I, I mean, I was really, I was very, very young, but I, I learned Italian, you know, as a child, as it's the second language. But when we came back to America, and I was still very young, um, I just didn't keep it up, you know. It it's tough being different as a child. I was already different, you know, from a million other reasons. And it was it was just kind of another thing that like adults thought it was incredible that I could speak two languages and other children thought it was weird and didn't like it. And so I kind of let it go, which is such a drag because I, I love the language so much. I can read it. I can kind of understand it. My speaking is not so great. But um, but I love the language, and I I I went back to to Italy um, in two thousand with my mom, and we just sort of revisited, you know, the we we did a whole tour, but we also went back to Bologna, where which is where we were living when I was a kid. So it was really it was beautiful, and I I love the Italian culture. I love the Italian people. It's yeah yeah. 
Wow, I'm with you. I love it. I love it. And I, I've I've been to Italy many times. I mean, countless number of times. I can't even remember how many times I've been to Italy, nice. and all over, and just absolutely love it and 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 adore it. So uh, that's uh, that's that's so fantastic. But you know what, the angel, because you have a foundation, mm. if you literally just um, you know, if, if you listened, yeah, it uh, it 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 it'll come back. It would it it will come back. It could. I mean, my mom was amazing. When we went back to Italy, you know, she she was really good. She retained it, mainly because I think because she had spoken it as an adult in the first place and it stayed with her. Um, with You know, apparently when you learn languages, before, I think before the, the age of eight, you, you, you use a different part of your brain to assimilate language. And so it's it's sometimes you can't access that anymore later on so it's a different way but I I yeah I would love to I mean it's yeah so we're just gonna have to go to Italy let's face it yeah uh, all absolutely. of us together <laughs> all of us together I would oh my gosh I would oh, that, that, oh my god yeah that that would that would be so much fun so incredible <laughs> and then um or the confessions tour yes the confessions yes. tour again we're putting all of these wonderful things out to the universe yeah that, that, that's so fantastic and the angel, I also want to know, um, were you born with dreadlocks? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's born with dreadlocks. <laughs> that is something one acquires later in life. <laughs> if one chooses to go down that road, road yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think she has this really cute, uh, you know, little, little, little girl with dreads. <laughs> A little curly. <laughs> Definitely curly top, no question. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, can we can we brag a little bit about um the rest of the cast yes yes yeah. i wanted to ask you about uh the rest of the cast and their roles who they are if you wanted to give a shout out take it away sure yeah. Ab absolutely absolutely so you know as I, so as i mentioned um you know carlos we're very 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 grateful to find carlos through matthew lasalle the uh the casting the brilliant independent um, film casting director. I mean, that's really his niche is independent films and he's magnificent. He's probably like the number one independent film casting director. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, so that was, uh, that was just great. And then also um, uh, Nico, uh, the, you know, the, the, the child, the boy in the film, whose name is uh, in, in real life, his name is Justice Farrell. Um, found him also through Matthew uh, uh, with a self tape. He literally made a, a safe a self tape and uh, just was so wonderful in that self tape. So that's uh, that's how I found Justice mm -hmm. Justice Farrell, and then um, Jamal J Mallory McCree. Um, uh, that that's his that's his that's his professional acting name. But his, you know his name is Jamal, um, who plays Christian. He and I have known each other for. I don't know, maybe, I think we met maybe in 2015 or so. And uh, and I was actually speaking on a panel and he attended that event and came up to me afterwards. And that's how we met, which was oh. really fantastic. And he's just an incredible, he's just an incredible actor. He's been in, in Homeland. Um, he's been on many, you know, many television series. Uh, he's a, he's, he's a very, very talented actor. And uh, his wife is Angela Lewis, who stars in Snowfall. So they're just like this, uh, this brilliant acting power couple. And uh, and then Cassandra Lee, who plays uh, Rosa, um, she uh, actually one of our executive producers, Byron Manuel. He works with uh, or has worked with Cassandra quite a bit. And literally, uh, there was another actress who originally was playing Cassandra, who then just couldn't do it at the last minute and literally Cassandra received the script hours before, hours before she started working with us. Um, so absolutely amazing and incredible. And it's, and it's, and it's, and it's a very challenging role. Yes, it, it is. is. Emotionally, it's a very challenging role. And she literally received the scripts just hour before, beforehand. And, uh, and she brought it and she was just fantastic. And one of the things, in terms of Cassandra, I also want to give an additional shout out is because most of the work that she gets cast in is comedy and, you know, and she really wants to do much, she wants to do more dramatic roles. So she just really, I mean, she jumped at this and she, she did an amazing job. She really did an amazing job. So, so perfect for her. 
Yes. Yeah. So it really worked out there fantastically. And then, um, and then we have a female priest who was magnificent. I love that. Yes. And, uh, and I'll let Angel speak a little bit about uh, Sydney, Sydney Saint. Sydney Sante. Yes. Um, but she is a saint. She, yeah. um, she's incredible. Uh, I, okay. The reason why I know Sydney is because I scored an independent film called Bombs Bursting in Air. That was another all women. Sydney wrote that script and starred in the film. And so when Yvette and I were talking about, you know, what to do, there was a new scene that she was writing for for the pickups. Um, you know, it, like you know, we were talking about what we were going to do. And then one morning I was just like the next morning, we, my my brain was just buzzing. And I sent her a text. I said, what if the priest was a woman? And she was like, I love it. I love it. That's a great idea. Who do you think could play it? And I'm like, let me think about it. And I really had nothing in my head at that point. I, I didn't even know if Yvette would like the idea at all. She might have been like, what are you crazy? No. So, you know, my Irish Catholic husband said that could be. Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, so I, I thought about it for a minute and I was like, ah, Sydney could be a really interesting choice. And this is kind of an interesting little anecdote because um, when I thought about Sydney, I called the director of the other film, Lydia, because I know that they're close. And I said, you, you know, do you know what Sydney's up to? Is she around? Could she even do something like this? She's like, I'll, I'll reintroduce you guys and, and see. So in the meantime, I, I thought, let me just have a quick look at, at something because I knew she had like one short that she had done that I hadn't seen and it was public. I could just, you know, click on it. So I watched this this piece and I can't remember the name of it now, but it's all her. It's all her in a in a goth club, in the bathroom of a goth club. And she's she's doing certain things and she, she she's just she's taking off all these like layers of clothing um and then she takes like a she takes something out of her, you know I don't want really to give it away but she takes some things out of her bag and one of the things she does is she's changing her clothes and she's and she, it's just her and she's just so compelling to watch and it's just her and looking at herself in the mirror and having a little bit of dialogue with herself and then she puts on a priest's collar and I was just like oh my god I had no idea, but the thought of that, and then as soon as I saw that, I was so excited. I said, I got to send this. I sent the link to Yvette and, um, and Sydney also is an amazing singer and she's got so much presence. And she, so I sent some like Instagram clips of her performing. And I sent this other, a, a link to this short that she had done. And, you know, if, we were both just like, this is meant to be. Yes, yes. So the angel, I uh, just want to say bravo on that casting. Uh, you cast, you know, as a casting director. Um, but that's I, not what I do. But, you know, okay. but, but this is the thing about independence and, and how we work together. It's sort of like, hey, what do you think of this? Well, do you have any ideas? I don't know. Let me think about it. I mean, I could have not had any ideas, to be honest. But it was just one of those things where it was a lucky thing. And it was just as I say, it was just kind of meant to be. And then yeah. I, I was so pleased that, you know, that Yvette w liked what she saw, you know, yes. and excited about it. And that Sydney was available. It was like a miracle, honestly. Yes. She, she she left America not long after that. Yes. She 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 moved she moved to, to London, in fact, very yeah. short, very shortly after that. And uh so it was just it, all meant to be and and she's just so fantastic in the role. And uh, and then the the uh, the last actress that 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 well the, the last actor that I haven't mentioned um, her name is Sharice Booth, who uh, who plays she plays the role of Nicole, um, and and she's yeah she's she's just she knocks it out of the park. So just you know we got really lucky with the casting, and mm -hmm. it it all it all it all came together. It all came together. Yeah. A really nice, really nice matching of um the uh traits and the characteristics and then of course the angel you seeing her in a in a uh a film production and then uh, it just it went into sync didn't it in 
and and I'm I'm saying that because you do sync as well. That's how you sync, you sync the music, right? So you sync the universe. I mean, it's so interesting because you know the the film that I scored that she wrote and starred in it was it was set in 1949 Coney Island. It could not have been more different. It had literally no connection whatsoever to this film or anything modern. So it, it was really that I just saw something in her that I really felt like she's really got it. Um, she's she's just really good but then also she's you know I, I came across that other that other short that she did I had nothing to do with that and it was just like wow okay you know so it was it, it's just and it's really nice I mean this is why I like doing shorts too because you come across a lot of talent you might not otherwise yeah. get to know and you know even like you know Yvette and I've spoken about Jesse Garcia who's having tremendous success now but, you know, I, I scored a short with he, he was one of the, the ensemble cast um, many, many years ago. And we've always stayed in contact. And he's so he does something really special, really subtle, really different. He's just got a, that certain something about him. And I'm like, oh, I'll be so happy to see the actors get to where they're ever they're going, you know, like to, to get new opportunities to show what, what they can really bring to something. And, and he's one of them. So. It's lovely, isn't Absolutely. it? Yeah, no, no, definitely. And, and I mean, and by the way, the angel, that was like another crazy connection that that you and I had because Jesse Garcia, he he is who I cast originally as uh, Manuel, the fallen angel. Um, but then, of course, COVID happened. And uh, when it was time to now actually go out and 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 do it, Jesse wasn't available anymore. And I mean, at, at this point, now he's starring in Marvel films yeah. and all kinds of things. He just, he really just, he literally wasn't available and he loves this Jesse, mm -hmm. but uh, he just wasn't, he just wasn't available to do it. And by the way, he's actually, and, and, and he has seen the proof of concept short and he loves it. Oh. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because we, we, we've stayed in touch. So, uh, so, you know, it's wonderful to, to see him, you know, go on to great, you know, great, great things, but it was when, but when, that was a freak accident that the that the angel and I actually discovered that we both knew yes. Jesse, um, and that there was a possibility that we could have worked the three of us could have worked together on this particular project, which is crazy. Um, yeah. But not to say that you know um, you know Jesse isn't in our future, right? In terms yeah. of in terms of confessions, and uh, and then there's a, another actress. Her name is uh, Michelle Ortiz, who now um, so she originally was playing the role of Rosa. And uh, again, when we were going to shoot, she had booked a big, uh, the lead in a pilot. <laughs> and now she's, now she's played the lead in like three different pilots. So, um, you know, it's, and it is wonderful to see this kind of evolution for, uh, you know, for, for, for these actors. Um, but, you know, but, but at the same time, you know, you establish those relationships, there's, there's trust, there's, there's respect. And, uh, and I really, you know, do believe that there's just the, it's, it's just about timing now, you know, like I know that one day I'll be working with Jesse. I know that one day I'll be working with Michelle and, and many others, but you just kind of know these things. Wouldn't you say the angel? Absolutely. You know, and it, the thing is like, you always keep people in mind. You know, I think about like, I did a, a you know, British, um, a British film called Kid Adulthood. And in that film, one of the ensemble uh, cast was Amel Amin. And he was a young actor at the time, and he's still a young actor, but he was even younger. And it, but it was like one of the first things that gave him like a real push, you know, as as a as an actor in a feature. And years and years later, uh, Ava DuVernay asks me to score a CBS pilot that she was directing, and I had no idea that Amel had been cast in that as well. Not as he he was like the sort of um, because it was a procedural he was part of that he wasn't part of the ensemble but he was part of the, the the main story and you know it was just i i just love it you know he's a british actor he's a wonderful actor he's a wonderful human being as well and he's having tremendous success now as a director as well i mean he's just a, i'm just, again super happy for him you know you, you just feel really good um watching people come up Yes, yes. Oh, I, I do too. I love it. I love seeing it. I love seeing them shine. And um, speaking of shining, I did want to touch on an incredible movie poster on your wall, The Angel Boiler Room. You did that, right? You um, you composed that 
whole feature film. That was a lot, right? Yeah, that was the first feature that I scored in its entirety. Um, there was a there was a lot of talk about. There's another one behind me uh, for Gridlocked, which is um, Tim Roth and Tupac. And really, the creatives wanted to hire me to score that film, but Polygram would just said no. She you she's never scored a whole film before. There's no way we'll we'll hire her. Um, but they fought to get me back on it. And so they they really were forced to have to find somebody who had a lot of experience and they hired Stuart Copeland. Um, and so Stuart became the, the lead composer, but then they came back to me and said, well, you know, how about you work with Stuart? And I was like, uh, if you want what I do, you kind of, I mean, and I have a lot of respect for Stuart, so it had nothing to do with him, but, it, but if you want what I do, I actually do that, like sitting in a room by myself. Yes. So, um, and so they said, well, what if we just give you your own cues and, you know, we'll just kind of split it up that way. And so that's how we actually wound up doing it. Um, but that's just like another little, you know, politics of, of our industry and how those things work sometimes. But uh, yeah, so that so that would have been the first um, wound up. And, and so Boiler Room wound up being the first film that I that I scored in its entirety. And uh, that was a, that was a fun one. Yeah, I love it. I love this. And I loved that movie. And it means even more now when I watch it, knowing uh, that you are such an integral part of it and that you made that movie so successful, as well as the actors and everyone else. But the music is so, I would say, you know, because of when talkies came in, 50% or more is the music with films and audio. Uh, so that's, and you played such an important part. So I want to thank you for that, The Angel, because I enjoy it so much. Well, thank you. But, you know, I really have to hand it to Ben Younger, who is the writer director, because he fought against being pushed into a corner as far as who to hire uh, to score the, the film. Really, they had him meet with every single male composer in town. Um, and he really wanted, he didn't want traditional score. He felt that, you know, he came from a boiler room. He wrote it from a perspective of having lived that life and knowing exactly what that was, which is why I think it, it struck such a chord with everyone in sales. Even to this day, people find out that I had anything to do with boiler room. They're like, oh my God, telling's not selling. You know, it's, <laughs> there's so many quotes that come out of there. ABCs, always be closing. Um, you know, it's really, it's just one of those, but he really had a vision. He was like, look, we used to like hang out as young guys and we were all listening to hip hop all day long. And so he didn't want traditional score and it didn't, yeah. it didn't suit the world of his characters. And it, so it really, the reason why I was able to do something different is because he wanted that, you know, he insisted, he was like, and can you get as much scratching in there as you can? I was like, okay, cool. Cause no one ever asked you to do that as a composer. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're one of the coolest cats we know. And also Yvette, you have done Lord of the Rings artwork for the video game. You've, you've been the real, a devil wears Prada um, executive in the fashionista uh, fashion world. Isn't that right, Yvette? I did work in that world. Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. I love the work. I hated the people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> mm, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So I have such uh, respect for both of you. Um, and I love you dearly so very much, um, each and every one of you. And Paul, um, are you still there? Are you hanging out with us still, Paul? Yes, of course, but but it's brought back so many memories of our first interview with the angel uh, and talking about boiler room and, and all that. So forgive me if, I, if I'm unusually quiet, but it's just, uh, you know, you, you know, when, when you're in the presence of greatness and you want to learn from people, you know, what's that old saying? God gave us two ears and one mouth and we should kind of use them in that capacity, you know, so it, it's I'd love just sit, kicking back and listening and learning. But so thank you for having me. Oh, Paul, thank you for being here. You know, you're you're fantastic. You really, really are. And uh, it's great working with you. Okay, you know what? It's starting. We're going to have to start wrapping the show up. It's gone so fast. But I wanted to ask you if there's anything else that you would like to promote. And then we're going to do our heart messages. Um, and that's what we do on the show. Now, I want to tell you, I got inspired from you 
That's why we do heart messages. It's from you, Yvette. You do the final thoughts on Clubhouse in New Hollywood. And that's where I got it from. I hope it's okay. Um, I changed it up as heart message. Um, but I want to give the credit to you, Yvette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My darling, you're 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 amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of shout outs, I guess there there are several things to shout out. Obviously. Join us on the 21st if you're in Los Angeles for the 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 LA International Film Festival at the at the Lemley. Um and uh, confessions will be screening on again it's Tuesday, March 21st. We are in the shorts block, which uh be believe begins at 7 45 p.m. So uh so please join us there. Also, please buy a ticket. Buy a ticket, join our confessions family, and uh, you can buy a ticket at entertainment. Again, that's M-I-N-T, entertainment.com slash projects slash confessions. We would love, we would love to, to, to have you in our expanding and growing and growing family. Uh, also join us for New Hollywood every week at uh, that's on the Clubhouse app. It's a live interactive podcast <laughs> kind of experience. And that's every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern. We have incredible industry guests as well as an unbelievable thriving community. And we meet and we talk. We 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 get we get our hands up, we we get our hands dirty, we roll our sleeves up, and we get in there for all of these new Hollywood conversations True. every single week. And, uh, and then, you know, of course, you can follow me on uh, Twitter and and Instagram at at the Yvette Vargas, the Yvette Vargas. So it's just basically my name and uh would love to would love to hear from you so uh so those are those are the shout outs that are are that are just quickly coming to to mind um aj and i'll pass the mic over to the lovely uh, angel for any of her shout outs thank you yes oh my goodness new hollywood really uh amazing and fantastic i mean the job you've been doing with new hollywood is just off the charts it's it's really incredible so um Yes, do, do do join us of a Wednesday at noon PST. Um, something I, I don't think I've even had a chance to tell you about is that um, there's a short film called The Kill Floor that I scored for director Carlos Avila. Carlos and I have done, th this is our third project together. Um, and he got into, or the film got into the San Diego Latino Film Festival on Saturday, March 18th. So um, for those in in that area, down in, in San Diego, um, that's, that will be part of, I think, a, another block, um, seven shorts, and it will be screening at 4.45 p.m. on the 18th of March. And so, um, you know, a very, very different project, uh, really heartfelt, really, really be beautiful story, a father and son story set in 2020, right in the, the heart of the pandemic and the uh, the hardship of the father working at the meat packing plant and his son, uh, a journalist coming to actually do a story about the plant and what was going on and how those protocols were not really being um, properly yeah, um, enforced. So it's um, but it's it's just a beautiful story, and uh, so yeah, I'm very happy for Carlos. I'm very happy for Yvette. Um, I'm you know I I just and and that that film will eventually it's it's for Latino Public Broadcasting. So this year they're doing fe a festival run, and then next year it will be uh, broadcast. Fantastic. So yeah, and then there's you know there's other stuff coming up. The the film that I scored for Paramount for Menage Huda, uh, who I've my fifth project with him that uh will eventually get an air date but we don't we don't know when it is yet but it's called heist 88 and i'm very excited about it uh it stars courtney uh b vance and it is a uh, a bassett vance production he and his wife angela bassett wow who is killing it out there right now um and uh yeah, it's it's just a really cool story about an actual bank heist um, that we in Chicago in 1988, and so it's 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 based on that that uh, bank heist. So look out for that soonish. I'm not exactly sure when, but it's coming. 
Okay, so exciting. So many great things happening. And can they follow uh, both of you on Facebook? Uh, Yvette, you mentioned Instagram. Um, yeah. It, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm on, I'm pretty much on uh, everywhere. I'm, I think I'm pretty easy to find. But, um, yeah. but you know, again, Twitter and Instagram have the same handles there. And it's at the Yvette Vargas on Facebook. Just search Yvette Vargas and and, and you'll find me. I'm on LinkedIn, Yvette Vargas. <laughs> I'm on Twitter, Yvette Vargas. So, uh, <laughs> in fact, on Twitter, I think I'm also, uh, I'm not, no, no, on a TikTok, I believe I'm also at the Yvette Vargas. So, I'm pretty easy to find. We love much, people. much easier than me. You're, I'm like impossible to find. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> angel is, you know, there's a lot of people calling themselves the angel. Um, and, and I've, so I've, I've had to like have different handles on so many different, you know, I'm like the, the angel dot super crucial on IG, S-U-P-A, super crucial, which is the name of my label, super crucial recordings and my, and my publishing company, super crucial music. Um, you know, it, I'm different. I, I'm just, I think I'm just at super crucial on, on Twitter. You know, it's just, it's a complete pain. Uh, it's, it's different on each one, but you know, you could track me down. Yes, yes. And and be, be sure to do that and support Yvette and the Angel. I also wanted to give a special shout out and thank you to Carlos, Yvette's um, partner, and to your uh, husband as well, the Angel. Um, thank you so much for supporting these beautiful, our beautiful ladies, and because uh, they mean so much to us. And you are the guys behind rooting and cheering them on there. And, and so we send you our best wishes and highest respect as well. Okay, so. we're, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do heart messages. Paul, I'm gonna start with you. Actually, Paul, can I start first? Of course, AJ, you're the <laughs> boss. <laughs> I'm the boss applesauce. You're the boss applesauce, go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Well, I did want to at least check in with you. So thank you, Paul, for that. Okay, here's my heart message. Um, and I have enjoyed this so much, both of you. Thank you, the angel. Thank you, Yvette. You've ju you're just absolutely fabulous in every way. And I, we simply adore you and love you, our sisters. We're so, so proud of you. So here's my heart message uh, for this week. If you want to succeed, then focus on changing yourself and not others. This is from Lessons Taught by Life, and I want to thank you, Georgette Dante, for the quote. Lord, uh, Georgette Dante, a burlesque legend from Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, Paul, over to you for your heart message for this week. Well, uh, something that just pops in my head is that I guess maybe sometimes out of the darkest times comes this bright, brilliant work that we're getting to see now, so I'm glad that uh, that we all had each other uh, others back and we still have each other's back but supporting each other and being able to create this work that you know maybe came out of the pandemic and when times were, were tough and no one's working but yet we made work for ourselves and then here's the fruits of our labor so keep it up uh, you know even even now keep creating and in a year or two it, it'll come to fruition and hopefully we'll uh, we'll just the, make the world a better place for that and if uh, anybody would like to connect with me I'm at paulvato.com and look for me in the new season of Ted, the, the premiere season of Ted, which is a prequel to the movies Ted by Seth MacFarlane. I've got a small part in that Yay. and that should be come out this year sometime. So uh, thank you guys. Thank, thank you guys so much for, uh, for letting me be a part of this wonderful evening. Thank you, Paul. Now go ahead and pass the baton to who you would like to, um, Yvette or uh, the angel. It's up to you. Well, let's let's start with the angel and then close out with a vet. And then all of us remember to follow, follow them, follow all of us on social media. But then especially uh, for, for the live show, let's let's all get out to the Lem to the Lemley and see uh, see the show. <laughs> right on, Paul. Oh, my goodness. And congratulations oh, on that that gig. That's great. Um, I, you know, I, my, my heart message is like, it's kind of my always, my, my forever message, which is, um, you know, staying tethered to your passion, staying tethered to your creativity is a really great place, um, to be. The world is a busy, loud, crazy place. And, you know, sometimes it really just being able to shut it out 
and live in a world that you're creating, right? World building that Yvette is doing, um, you know, all of the writing that we do, whether it's music, whether it's screenplays or books or whatever we're, we're doing, um, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to have that, that ability to do that. And I think it really helps us as humans to stay a little bit more kind of grounded and sane. <laughs> I think it, I think it helps. So that's my, that's my little, my parting thought for, for the evening. Love it. Love it. Love it. Fantastic. Um, yeah. I mean, these, these heart messages are, are, are fabulous, fabulous. Um, my goodness. So, I mean, the, the, the first heart message that comes to mind and, and, and you all know that I say this constantly, but I so believe this and I live this is green light yourself. Never wait for anyone to give you permission to live and fulfill and, 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 and act on your dream. So, uh, that, that just for myself, um, that's just something that's burning and yearning inside of me constantly is create, 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 and just never wait for anyone to give you permission to do that. So that's, uh, absolutely, uh, one of my big heart messages. And, and just to add, uh, on, on, on top of that is love yourself, you know, just, just love yourself, be kind, be kind to yourself, um, because everything emanates from that, right? Like we are, we are this, uh, this, this vast, incredible, uh, well of, um, of beauty and knowledge and creativity and love. Um, and, uh, but we have to nurture that. And, and, and when we do, then that becomes this in like bottomless, um, source of inspiration. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, love and an instrument of change that, uh, that, that, is built into our work that then pours out. So, so that's something else that I wanted to, wanted to add in terms of a, of a, of a heart message. Um, I'm putting a, a spin, the heart spin on, uh, on some of the things that probably would normally come up for me, but you made me think about the heart message, AJ. So those are, those are some of the things that I want to share for this evening. Thank you so much, Yvette. And I am so thankful and grateful that you, Yvette Vargas, and you, the angel, and Paul, you are in my life because you are the people that um, this world needs. Your hearts are pure, pure love and golden, and we need you, and we thank you, and it's an honor to be alongside you. So with that, thank you, Yvette. Thank you, the angel. Thank you, Paul. And until we meet again, and look at my multicolored fan. This is representing all the colors of the rainbow. And we love you all. We, we love you all. Au revoir. Beautiful. Good night. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been such a pleasure, such an honor, AJ. And of course, Paul, for hosting us. And then, you know, the angel, my other half at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for an incredible evening. I'm honored. And this was, and this was just, just beautiful. This was beautiful. And you know what, AJ, it's just a reflection of how beautiful you really are. And you are just one of the sweetest people I think I've met <laughs> really maybe ever. Um, yeah. And Paul, you're wonderful and fun and funny. And we've had such a beautiful time tonight and, and before I really appreciate both of you so much. And it goes without saying, but I will say it. I really appreciate you, Yvette. So, love oh my you. God. Thank you, guys. If you hear water, that's me about to jump in the hot tub. So, <laughs> it's, on that note, at, at the Lemley. <laughs> at the Lemley. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, again. guys. Much love. Much love. Bye. Good. Night. See you on the twenty-first. <laughs> yes.